Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Coming at you again here from Lowdown County. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Dixie Lee Shell Station up the road. Uh, that's where I was uh, recently arrested for protesting. And uh, the fact that uh, um, this gentleman, well, I don't even want to use the word gentleman, this uh, shady ass businessman, Victor, don't know his last name or I'd be glad to say it too, runs uh, uh, the Dixie Lee Shell up here and that's going to be located at 16289 Kingston Pike, US-70, Lenore City, Tennessee, 37771. Now, uh, uh, Victor usually has good gas prices posted, but that's to sucker people in. And uh, um, I bought a battery up there for a vape pen, you know, uh, uh, something similar to this, but this isn't the one. This one actually works. And uh, um, so uh, I noticed when we first bought it that, uh, um, that it was a little weak. Well, I mean, you know, it's sitting in a package, so you assume, well, let's take it home and charge it. So we took it home, charged it overnight. It never did work properly. Every now and then you could get it to spit and sputter a little bit, but, uh, I mean, you know, for $16.38, no. So we took the receipt, we went back to the shell station, um... And a terrible argument ensued. I mean, basically, Victor told... Well, first, he started saying uh, uh, that I could have bought that anywhere and brought it into him. Now, I've been a customer at the Shell Station for over 20 years. I, I even worked there at one point. Not for Victor, but uh, I've been trading up here at this Shell Station. I, I've lived here uh, at Dixie Lee Junction almost 50 years now. Me and my family have been trading in that store probably 60 years, ever since it was built. Um, and to call a repeat customer a liar is just unheard of in the business world. Uh, I mean, I don't know any other way to take that. Uh, um, okay, so the, the younger gentleman that works for him was also right there. And uh, so we turned to him and we said, hey, yeah, he's the one that sold it to us. And he said, yeah, uh, uh, Uncle Victor, I'm the one that sold it to him. They were just in here yesterday. So Victor throws his hands up in the air and he says, listen, I buy these from China and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So, you know, through his anger, he's revealing that he knows he sells junk, but he don't care. Because Victor makes most of his money if you go up there, and I'll be bringing you another show pretty soon. If you watch that place on a Friday afternoon, there is a steady stream of... I don't want to uh, sound racist. I, I, I'm not. Uh, um, Let's see, how's the proper way? Uh, you see a lot of uh, people with brown skin, I, I don't know, I, Latinos, I guess some of them may be Puerto Ricans, uh, um, and I'm sure most people use a bank. They come in every Friday to get their check cashed. And uh, um, I'm assuming they come there because they're illegal aliens. I mean, Victor charges them to cash their checks, but uh, um, why would they not go to a bank where they could get a check cash for free, open a savings account? Well, the answer to that is because uh, uh, they probably can't, because they're not citizens of this country. They don't have social security numbers and things like that. So, uh, uh, anyway, there's a steady stream of, uh, uh, of workers, let's just call them workers, run in and out of that shell station all day, every Friday. I guarantee you, there must be tens, maybe a hundred thousand dollars or more passing through this place on Fridays. It's insane. Um, 
and, and Victor gets a piece of every single one of those chicks. I got no, no problem with somebody cashing a check for somebody, but uh, uh, when you're uh, when you're making money off of a group of people who has no other choice, uh, uh, that is a no-no. And you know, illegal immigrants is a hot topic in this uh, community right now. Um, and you wouldn't believe all of the illegal immigrants in Lenore City and Loudoun County. Our sheriff's department and police departments also know that immigrants can't complain very much. So they farm these people regularly for cash, court costs, fines, and uh, I I'm certain there are probably officers out there uh, uh, who have bullied and intimidated these people. And uh, um, it's just not a good situation at all. Uh, and uh, there is n absolutely zero oversight in Loudoun County. The sheriff is king. Uh, the police chiefs are little lords. And all the deputies are princes and princesses. Um, uh, we really need some oversight in Loudoun County. But anyway, back to this shell station. I was up there last Saturday after uh, exhausting uh, what I felt were my other resources. I decided to uh, get out on foot. You'll see in the uh, picture on uh, Google that there's a bank right to the left of the uh, Dixie Lee Shell Station. And they were closed on Saturday. So I pulled into that parking lot, set up my video camera, and I was... Uh, uh, shouting because there, I was all the way across the street. I wasn't shouting to be yelling at people. I was shouting so they could hear me. And uh, and I was uh, asking customers to come and hear my story and basically just protesting and spreading the word. Well, I've been there maybe 30, 45 minutes. And uh, 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 long story short, I mean, you, you can see the videos yourself. Uh, uh, long story short, uh, uh, a couple of uh, Loudoun County thugs showed up. And... Uh, um, the first first one wasn't too bad. Uh, we uh, had a, a reasonable conversation, and uh, I believe we were about to part company, and I was going to head home and make some signs, like the uh, deputy suggested. Uh, instead of yelling at people, I was going to use some picket signs, because uh, I don't want people to think I'm not trying to be friendly or I'm trying to harass them. Uh, that's not what... That's not the point of a demonstration or a protest. Uh, so, uh, um, anyway, a second deputy shows up, and this is a corporal. You would think that uh, 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 with, uh, with a higher rank, you would get somebody that's better trained and, 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 and with de-escalation and somebody that knows the Constitution a little bit better and whatnot. And, uh, but that was not the case. Uh, it was actually the supervisor that, uh, 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 grabbed me up, bent my arm up behind me, arrested me for disorderly conduct, and, uh, um, and then they threw me in the back of a car and whisked me away while the, uh, the corporal is still standing there beside my car, keys in the ignition. I, I begged the uh, the officer that was uh, taking me away. I said, "Please let me uh, uh, see that my vehicle is secured, and I do not consent to any searches." And uh, so, of course, no. We've got to go now. Uh, uh, they uh, took me down to um, they took me down to the jail, um, and. I also found out uh, shortly after leaving that the corporal intended to have my vehicle towed from a parking lot. I mean, it wasn't in anyone's way or anything like that. I told him I would make bond and get up probably before dark. 
little did I know they had more in store for me. So, anyway, I made sure to tell the deputy uh, also, no searches and do not call money makers. Money makers was only uh, uh, maybe a mile on down Highway 70 from that bank parking lot I was parked in. But they towed it anyway. I was hoping, you know, as well, it's not far, so maybe it won't be much. Get back to that in a minute. So they take me down to the jail. I get inside, out of the sally port. I ask for my phone call. Um, no, no, uh, you can't have a phone call till we get you booked in. Uh, well, okay. Let's get booked in then. So, uh, uh, we start with, uh, uh, you know, name, all this stuff, and, and uh, if the guy had been respectful, I probably would have answered his questions, but he was really rude and condescending, and, you know, uh, 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 you're going to tell me or you're going to be sorry, that type of attitude, you know, and uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, we finally get to the point to where uh, uh, they take me into a bathroom and tell me to strip. So I take off all my street clothes, and I'm standing there with nothing but my boxers, and he says, take off your underwear. I am not going to remove my underwear in front of five grown men. Now, if they want to give me a little privacy with one officer, maybe two, then I probably would have uh, 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 gone along with it. But I ain't going to uh, uh, strip that down naked for their jollies. So I placed my hands on top of my head like this. And I said, I'm not pulling my underwear down with all these people in here. If y'all want to go out there and get one of those girls or somebody like that, I'll be glad to let you look at my peepee. But I'm not going to show my peepee to a bunch of grown men. Not going to do it. They asked me again, remove your underwear. I said, look, boss. I said, uh, uh, you got gloves on. Take a peek. If you need to see in there, take a peek. But no, I am not taking my underwear off in front of all these people. Not going to happen. Bam! Blindsided me. Twisted my arm. I mean, I can't even put my arm behind my back. It's been three days, and I still can't put my arm behind my back. But this man, and this is the corporal, he was bald-headed, and uh, he was kind of stout. And there was also another guy uh, who was about 350 freaking pounds. How he passed a physical, I had no idea. Uh, um, and uh, the third officer, he's pretty skinny. He wouldn't go 125 soaking wet. Anyway, uh, uh, um, they're trying to slam my head down on that little concrete bench and bust my head. But fortunately, I'm a pretty strong guy myself, and I was able to, uh, you know, kind of hold myself off. So then he starts twisting my arm, and I lowered myself gently down onto the uh, bench, and... I swear I thought my arm was going to break. And I remember his face being right here beside mine. And he was like four shades of purple. And he was straining with all his might. And I remember telling him, you break it. But if you do, you better kill me. Because it, uh, when I get out of here, there's going to be some consequences and repercussions from your actions today. Well, they, that made them matter, and I swear I thought that man was going to break my arm. And uh, so they grabbed, my, grabbed me by the legs, spread my legs, and bent me over that uh, 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 little concrete bed thing they got in there, you know, and uh, jerked my shorts down, and a, a strain, an unusually long amount of time went by. Um, I mean, it was probably only 10, 15 seconds. But when you're in that position, it seems like hours, and I really thought I was about to get raped or have or be sodomized with something. Uh, that was the level of, uh, of 
professionalism, let's say, that was going on at this point in time. So, uh, uh, anyway, they finally give me a jumpsuit to put on and uh, uh, let me up. And, of course, I was complaining and uh, uh, whatnot about my arm. I asked for a doctor. I've got asthma. I have a pacemaker. I've been asking for a doctor since we hit the door. Uh, never got to see one. Then uh, uh, they put me back in the holding room. And uh, uh, as the door shut, you know, we made a couple of comments. And I just knocked on the window a couple of times, you know. And... Uh, uh, and he screamed back at me, Don't beat on my window! And then I said, I'm not beating on your window, dumbass. And then I did. I said, Don't you know the difference between a knock and a beat? Man, that door flew open. They put me in a restraint chair and jerked those straps so tight. I don't know if you can see it. And I've got other pictures that were taken a couple of days ago, but uh, one of them uh, took the hide off right here, where they, I mean, they didn't adjust it. They were like, and I mean, straining to pull them tighter. So this is what I'm left with here three or four days later. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can get some pictures for you here off my phone of uh, uh, the recent, uh, more recently, right after I had gotten out. Okay, yeah, here was my uh, uh, right forearm, if you can see that. You can see the uh, purple and yellow. And, uh, uh, let's see. And here was my uh, left forearm on the day that I got out. Okay, and uh, um, also, I've got a pacemaker that's right here, and that strap that goes behind your neck, it goes right down over that. And they pulled that son of a bitch as tight as they could pull it. I mean, I was begging for a doctor. My chest was hurting. I thought I was, uh, I literally thought I could be feeling the beginnings of a heart attack. I screamed, hollered, begged for help from the time they started beating on me. Pretty much non-stop. I was denied a phone call until 6 a.m., I went in that night at uh, somewhere around uh, 6, 7 p.m. and was held with no phone call to even let my poor mother know that I was okay, elderly, um, and denied a phone call until approximately 6 a.m. the next morning. Uh, again, just to show their power. Um, so, uh, uh, I finally get out of jail, um, and I go to pick up my vehicle. Big surprise again for towing my vehicle less than a mile. And you guys do the math. I mean, uh, Dixie Lee Shell is at 16289 Kingston Pike and US 70 in Lenore City. And let's see. Moneymaker's Record Service is at 1177 Highway 70, Lenore City, Tennessee. It's literally maybe a mile. I go to pick up my truck, $350. I mean, it didn't even need to be towed. It was sitting in a parking lot. It was towed purely for spite. So, the guy that worked at Money Makers, I mean, I can't give them a good review because they know what's going on and they allow it. They allow the Sheriff's Department to extort money in their, in their name. But, uh, um... 
backbone, buck up on them, and uh, uh, and if they do you like they did me, hey, so what? Uh, 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 free money is the way I look at it. Uh, uh, I, I'll gladly let somebody whoop my ass for uh, a few thousand dollars. Bring it on, boys. I ain't the least bit afraid, and I ain't afraid to die either. My daddy raised a patriot. I, I'm I'm prepared to die for what I believe in. Are you? With that, I'm going to close my show today. And uh, we'll see y'all again. But until the next time, y'all come go with us. Have a good one. is that the gentleman I spoke to, and I didn't get his name, he was a, 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 he was a younger gentleman, clean cut, uh, uh, well dressed, and uh, I think he felt sorry for me. He ended up letting me out of there for 250 cash. And, and just out of, I said when I was leaving, just out of curiosity, if I had a called, if my truck would have been broke down at uh, uh, Dixie Lee, and I had called for, to have it towed into your garage to have it checked out, how much would that have cost me? $75, he replied. So basically, the sheriff's department is extorting individuals to get their vehicles back. And if you can't pay that, they will keep your vehicle. And also, um, that means that the Sheriff's Department is apparently pocketing about $275 off of every car they order towed in. I don't understand how that works. Uh, I mean, that seems like straight-up extortion to me. Um, yeah, uh, um, so, uh, then I get my, uh, truck home, well, the first thing I notice, I open the door, everything that was in my, uh, console is in my passenger seat, everything that was in my glove box is now on the floorboard, my wallet, it took me about ten minutes to find it, it wasn't in its regular place, I found it finally under the seat, um, and you can see a video I posted exactly what my truck looked like that day I picked it up. And uh, then I brought my uh, camera in and popped the memory card in my computer. And not only that, but you can plainly hear that deputy. And occasionally you'll see his hand and, and uh, a bit of his uniform too. But uh, it, it's obvious that he's searching my truck. Even after I said, I do not consent. Uh, that's against the law. This is a clear-cut case of a police officer abusing his authority. And I charge these officers. Hang on, I'm looking it up so we'll uh, uh, make sure we get it right. It is my intent... that these officers well I can't find it right now but basically, it is a federal offense. It is a violation of civil rights to, for an officer to use his authority to deprive a citizen of his rights. You guys, do you remember taking an oath? Do you remember the words you said when you took your oath? You took an oath to defend my rights. Not yours. Mine. And you blatantly disregarded it. I mean, you don't even care. You knew I was recording you. 
And you had to show me that you'll do as you damn well please and that you'll get away with it. And, and you likely will. But not because I didn't do as much as I could to try to bring your thug ass down. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Immature. Childish. So far from professional. It's sickening. I'm going to have to close now. But, uh... I hope these videos do some good for somebody somewhere, and I hope the governor's looking. Uh, I have been in contact with them, and I've let Channel 10, Channel 6, and Channel 8 News know about our Cop Watcher channel we founded, and about all the uh, uh, inflammatory remarks. Uh, uh, um, I've got uh, uh, conversations on my phone right here. Uh, uh, me and Jimmy Davis used to be friends. Uh, but I have been uh, uh, begging Jimmy Davis for a sit-down for three years to discuss corruption and law enforcement in Loudoun County. And, uh, um, I mean... Right here is the conversation where I'm telling him that uh, uh, I just got assaulted in his jail and a man that says he's my friend and not once does he reply or even ask if I'm okay. Um, I've uh, sent in all kinds of FOIA requests uh, I've been harassed by officers, and when I try to talk to Jimmy, I'm trying to find it. Okay, right here it is. It's kind of small. I hope you can see it, but uh, um, here is a. Uh, uh, here was the only, some of the only replies I got from uh, a sheriff candidate, James Davis III. Um, Jimmy changed the chat theme to chill. Jimmy changed chat theme to monochrome. Jimmy set the emoji to, I'll show you the, the thing. Jimmy changed the chat theme to chill. Set, Jimmy set the emoji to, and I, I hope you guys can see that. This is the sheriff, uh, this is the man who wants to be the next sheriff of Loudoun County. And while we're, uh, discussing that, I'll be doing another show later. But, uh, uh, citizens should also know, if they don't already, that, uh, um, rumor has it, uh, uh, Jimmy Davis's late wife, God rest her soul, was uh, uh, caught several times embezzling money. Uh, one of which, uh, uh, rumor has it, was the uh, uh, Loudoun County Sheriff's Department even. And we're not talking about a few bucks here. We're talking about uh, uh, several thousand dollars in each case. And I believe that uh, uh, my friend James Davis has become so far brainwashed by these people that he uh, uh, used his authority to basically gain favor for his wife on these cases. I mean, uh, uh, anybody caught embezzling more than once or twice usually goes to prison. Um, so, uh, yeah, y'all take that. Don't believe me. I, I could be wrong. I don't have facts, but I believe that's worth looking into. I mean, I'm certain that there are some news uh, agencies out there that have the power to look into things like that. Uh, um, also, I've filed several FOIA requests. I've filed several uh, complaints on other officers. Another incident uh, uh, on uh, 10-25-2020. I was stopped 
by a Lenore City uh, deputy or Lenore City officer because he saw me, uh, uh, um, he thought he saw something exchanged hands between me and a friend of mine who just got out of prison. And as you well know, the Supreme Court has ruled not, not recently, it's been quite a while since they uh, uh, said this, but, uh, um, um, you know, uh, stopping somebody or harassing someone just because they're uh, uh, hanging out with a known drug addict or known drug users, that's not enough to initiate a, 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 a that's not enough to detain anybody or to even uh, uh, ask. I mean, you do have a right to privacy, um, and the police can't just, uh, this isn't Germany in 1929, they're not the Gestapo, they act like the Gestapo, but they're not, 